Hi everyone, in this task you will be checking for the Armstrong number. First, what is the Armstrong number? The Armstrong number aka uh, the narcissistic number or narcissistic numbers. They're also known as the pluperfect digital invariant PPDI, also known as the plus perfect number is a number that is equal to the to its to the sum of its individual digits raised to the power of the number of its digits. So that is the uh, simplest uh, definition that I could come up with. I've provided you with some examples here. So uh, what is an a what is an Armstrong number? What is a narcissistic number? Let's say we have this one five three. So if we separate all the digits from this one five three, like one, five, and three, and we raise it to the power. What is the power that we raise it to? That is the number of digits it has. So, a one five three. How many digits it has? Three digits. So one raised to the power of three plus five raised to the power of three plus three raised to the power of three. If we combine all of these, if we add all, all these, and they become 153, then we call this an Armstrong number or a narcissistic or a plus perfect number. Now, um, uh, we also have a four digit Armstrong number, and that is you can see that nine raised to the power of four, or you just multiply nine by itself four times. This is equal to nine raised to the power of four. Be, the reason that this time it is raised to the power of 4, not raised to the power of 3, is because this number has 4 digits. So the number of digits, they determine what is the power that we raise each individual digit to. So 9 raised to the power of 4, 4 raised to the power of 4, uh, 7 raised to the power of 4, and 4 again raised to the power of 4. If we combine all of these, if we add all of them and they become 9474, we say that it is an Armstrong number. Now, I'm not saying that this task is going to be easy. There is, uh, the code is going to be easy, but the logic is going to be a little bit intermediate Python. And we have covered a lot, so I do expect you to come up with a solution. This may take a little bit longer, like a few minutes longer than our previous ones. The reason for that is now we are kicking this, um, these uh, challenges up a notch in each individual challenge that we move forward, each individual mini program, and you're going to encounter more and more difficult stuff just to stimulate that problem-solving uh, side of your brain just to make sure that you know how to come up with a solution you're not stressed and all that stuff so go ahead pause the video I'm sure um, I have no doubts I'm sure you're gonna go come up with some sort of a solution and that solution is going to work in case you want to see my solution you're gonna see that after three seconds so how was the solution. How was the task? I'm sure you did great. So the task said that you need to grab a number and then display it whether that number is an Armstrong number or not. We need to grab that number from the user. Now before actually diving into that, uh, I would like to sh uh, tell you that the two most important operators that we will be using in this task is the modulus or modulo operator and the integer division operator. So uh, I'm not going to attempt to grab number from the user because I need to test a lot of stuff and I cannot just run it inside the terminal each time because that takes some time. So I'm, I'm going to create this number and I'm going to comment it out. Let's come down here and I'm going to grab a number, not number, number. And I'm going to set it to 663. This is, a, this is an experimental number. And we are going to experiment with it. So we are going to work with this and I'm going to explain it to you what, what actually uh, is happening here. First off, what we are going to do is we need to find the order of this number. The order basically means how many digits there are. So there are three digits. So I'm going to say finding the order of the number 
Why we need to find it? Because each individual digit, each individual digit is going to be raised to that order. We need to find the order. The order in this case is three, but we need to find it programmatically the way that we don't need to supply it every time. So the pro program is intelligent. It can find it on its own. So I'm going to create a variable order. Now the length of any digit is going to give us the order uh, for us, uh, the order that we want to raise each individual digit to. So I'm going to grab the len function and I'm going to create, I'm going to convert this to, the, to a string and then it is going to give us the order. So if you print uh, order, it should give us three. And if we take a look at the type of uh, order, so it has to be, and the type of the order is a an integer. And you might be saying, what what is happening here? We converted it to a string, but this says it is still an integer. The reason for that is this len method, this gives you an integer. So the result of this function is always going to be an integer, but ironically enough, it grabs a string. It does not grab an integer. So if you just go ahead and directly pass a number, it says data uh, object of type integer has no len method. So you need to pass in a string to get a number. I know it's ironic, but that's how it works. So it, give, it gives us a number and we know that it is three. So that's the length we have successfully found it. I'm going to initialize a sum and I'm going to set it to zero. Sum, uh, sum, I could just say, I could just say sum and I'm going to initialize it to zero. I'm going to create a temporary value and I'm going to call it temporary value. Let's set it to the number that we have inserted. The reason for that is we are going to do, we are going to uh, apply some um, logic on this temporary value and we do not want our number, our original number to change. So if I apply it on the number, then this original number is going to change and we will never know whether or not it's an Armstrong number. Let's use a while loop. These are very good use cases for while loops. And we're going to say for as long as the temp value is greater than zero, we don't care if it is less than zero. Let's create a digit. Now I'm going to grab the temp value and using the modulo operator, I'm going to divide it by 10. What is going to be the result of this? So 666 divided by 10. Now, taking a look at the nature of the modulus operator, it's going to give us the remainder of the division. Now, if you grab, like if you do this old school, this division, you grab a piece of paper and a pencil and you just divide it on your paper, you're going to see that there are how many tens are within the 663. So this is 660. Let's say this 3 doesn't actually exist. Let's say it is 660. So how many tens are actually there? Let me just close that because it is calculating it and we are going to throw an error. My computer is running hot, hot. So we know that 66 tens are within the 6 uh, within the 660. So we know that 660 is perfectly divisible by 10 and the remainder of it is always going to be zero. How do we know that? So let me comment that part out. I'm just going to open this again and I'm going to say print 660 modulo 10. Oops. Modulo 10 and we get zero. Why? Because 660 is perfectly divisible by 10. The reason for that is there are 66 tens within the 660. But what if we pass in 663? Then that 3 is not equal to 10. So it is the remainder of the division. So modulus operator is going to give us the remainder of the division. We don't care about the quotient or the result of the division, but the remainder of the division. That's why we use the modulo operator. So the remainder of 663 divided by 10, we know that it is going to be 3 at first. So the first value, I'm going to say the first value of digit is equal to 3. I'm going to comment this one out and I'm going to come back to it So because I want to explain to you how this actually works. 
Now uh, we are going to grab our sum and we are going to add to it its own value plus the value of the digit times whatever the order is. So what is the order? The order in this case it is three. So we could pass in three. We could pass in four for a four digit number but we did do, do that programmatically. So we could just pass in order. So whatever the order is. So if the number has four digits, it means the order is four. If the number has 10 digits, the order is going to be 10. And we wanted to automatically grab it and, and calculate it. The reason that we add sum to it, because the value of sum is going to be different. It is going to start from zero, but it's not going to stay at zero. That's why we add it. And then we grab the sum and then we add it again. Now this line can be simplified. We can use this. Uh, we can do this using a, an assignment uh, uh, augmented operator, an addition augmented op assignment augmented operator, and we're going to get that. I could give uh, I could give you both versions, so you know how this actually works. So I'm going to grab the digit and I'm going to add it. I'm going to multiply it to the, I'm going to raise it to the power of this order. And then plus whatever we had, we are going to store it within the sum. So before actually moving forward, I'm just going to say first value of uh, sum. Let's say what is the first value of sum? So we know that sum is zero. So this sum is zero. What is the digit? Digit is uh, temporary value div modulo 10 we are going to get 3 so it is uh, 0 plus 3 raised to the power of 3 so what is the first value of uh, sum so we got 3 uh, 0 plus 3 raised to the power of 3 we get 27 so we get 0 plus 27 so we end up with what come on we end up with 27. Keep this in mind. We are going to come back to it because we are not done. And eventually, because this is a while loop and the while loop depends on this temporary value, we need either to increase it or decrease it so it becomes zero and this condition is no longer true. When this condition is no longer true, we save ourselves from an infinite loop. And now I'm going to use what is called a an integer division operator. Now this, as opposed to the modular operator, this is going to give us the quotient or the result of a division. What does that actually mean? So I need to show it to you. Now we know that there are um, six, uh, let's say it is 660, that is easier to work with. Now we know that if we grab number and we say modulo 10, it is going to give us zero because this number is perfectly divisible by 10. But what is the result of this division? What is the quotient of this division? That is 66. So there are 66 tens within this 660. So if we take a look at this, let's save that. The modulo is going to be zero. We know that, that part. Modulo is zero. We know that part. But what about the result of the division? Where is the result or uh, aka quotient? The result is going to be obtained by double forward slashes divided by 10. And we get 66. So 66 times 10. Now keep in mind, the 66 times 10, it has to give us 660, which it does in this case. So 10 times 66, we get 660. So now you know what is the difference between the modulo and the double forward slash or the integer division operator. Now this integer division operator does something else as well. It rounds the number, the result that we have. So in case we had 66 point something, that point something will be removed and we will just end up with a whole number component. So if I pass in three, you see that we got 66, but this is not actually what is happening. Because if we take a look at what, what is ac the actual result of, if I remove one of them, so we got the actual result is 66.3. The double forward slash just removes that decimal points and it gives us the whole number integer, the whole number component of the result of this division. 
So now moving on, we know what this is going to give us. So I'm just going to close that. And so if we say temporary value and using the augmented assignment operator, I'm going to say divided by 10. Now this line resembles this line. So if we were to say temporary value is going to be equal to temporary value divided by 10. Both of them are equal. The reason for that is we are dividing it by 10 by 10. So it goes less than zero and this condition is no longer true. And we do not end up with a loop, with an infinite loop. So what is the first value of, first value of um, temp value? Uh, what is it? It is going to be, we know that, we, I, we just uh, calculated that, it is 66. We are going to come back to this. Now, this loop is done. Finally, we are going to end this logic with an if statement. We say that if number is equal to sum that we have been having so far, we are going to say that, uh, I'm just going to say arm strong number else, uh, print not not an arm strong number arm strong number an arm strong number let's say an arm strong number not an arm strong number now let's go ahead and let's check this we are going to come back you know what I'm going to explain this logic so we know that the first value of the digit is going to be three we did that and then three um, um, three uh, we got 27 that is the first value of sum and the first value of 66 is going to be um, after the division we are going to get 66 now this 66 is going to be passed within this condition we know that 66 is greater than zero right so what is the second value of digit 66 modulo 10 what do we get we get six so the second value let me just convert it let's say the second value of digit is going to be six so sum plus digit time uh, raised to the power of order so order is going to stay the same it is going to be three but what is the value of sum it is no longer zero it was 27 so what is going to be these oops what is going to be the second value of sum i'm just going to say second so it is going to be uh, 27 because that is the previous value let me remove the rest of them so sum was 27 we are going to say plus what is the value of digit we know it is six so six raised to the power of three what is going to be the result of all of that so let me grab the calculator I could grab the calculator or I could just write it to save you some time. It is going to be 27 plus 216, which we are going to end up with 243. Now, so it is some, now keep in mind, we are checking the value of sum, right? So we have 27, then we got 243. Now, the temporary value, uh, temp the temporary value is 66. We again divide it by uh, using the whole integer division. We divide it by 10. And what is the second value? So second value of this is going to be, you can check that, it is going to be 6. Keep in mind that the original, original value of temp value it was uh, what was the original value it was 663 so this was the original value we divided it by 10 we got 66 we divided again by 10 we got 6 6 is going to be passed here like this we know that 6 is greater than 0 so all this is going to happen again so uh, 6 modulo 10 we are going to get again 6 so the third value third value is going to be six again so we have 243 here let me remove all of that 243 plus let me change this to third plus six raised to the power of three i'm going to save you some time and i'm going to give you the result we end up with 216 because we know that six raised to the power of three we get 216 
plus 243 plus uh, 243, we end up with 459. Now, the cool thing is, if you add 27 plus this plus this, if they equal to the number, then it means that this is an Armstrong number. If the, they do not equal to this number, then it is not going to be an Armstrong number. So we are going to come down here. The value is 6. 6 divided by 10. It is going to be something lower than... I'm just going to do it. So I'm going to say print uh, 6 divided by 10. We know that it is going to be lower than 0, something like that. If I'm not mistaken. So I know that it has been 20 minutes, but I can't help it. I have to explain every part. And I think that is a good thing. Let me just save this. So we got zero, right? So it is zero. And zero is no longer greater than zero. And this while loop is not going to run again. So let's go back. There we go. So let's save this. Let's run this program. And it says not an Armstrong number. Now, 153 is an Armstrong number. So if I add it here, it says an Armstrong number. Uh, 9474 is also an Armstrong number. There you go. Now, we need to get the input from the user and tell the user whether that uh, number is an Armstrong number or not. So I'm just going to do that and I'm going to save it. Let's run this code. So let's say 1. It is an Armstrong number. Uh, one digit numbers, they are, they are all on Armstrong numbers. Oops, I have to insert something. So if I say um, 20, this number, this is not an Armstrong number. So I hope you have learned something. This was, the logic was not that complicated, but use, knowing what to use here, that was a little bit tricky. And by now, I'm sure you have mastered while loops as well. See you in the next task.